Hi there, I'm Eitan, and welcome back to Wix Wiz. In our previous video, we showed how to do a basic implementation of HTTP functions in Wix. And in this video, we're going to be showing how to use that in order to create a payload URL for a webhook in an external application. So whenever that application fires off an event, our URL will listen to it, and then we can process that data that we receive however we want. And this can be used with a wide range of applications from Zapier to Airtable, and in our case, where we're going to be showing the example, GitHub. So let's get started. So in our demonstration today, we are going to be creating a webhook for GitHub. And before you get started, you should have your HTTP functions.js file open in the back end of your Wix website. Uh, if that was unclear to you, then you should probably watch the previous video where I give kind of an introduction to HTTP functions uh, in Wix. I'm assuming kind of a basic knowledge, and now we're going to be taking it to the next level with some implementations. And we're going to be using GitHub for this demonstration. And essentially, we're going to be setting up a webhook that will listen to events from this repository that I created, which is uh, Ethan Waxman uh, dash webhook. And if you're not sure what webhooks are, essentially, they are a way for our application to listen out to another application's events. So something happens on this application, like somebody makes a new commit for GitHub, or if it was, you know, Airtable, maybe somebody added a new line of data or any application, it listens out for an event and our website will get notified and then we can decide to do what to do with that uh, notification, essentially. And in general, the way this usually works is that the app that you're trying to listen to will give you a place to provide a URL, which is supposed to be listening out for these events. So in the case of GitHub, it's over here in settings. And if we go over here down to webhooks, we have the option to add a new webhook. And I'm just going to verify my uh, account one second. So bear with me. And after I've authenticated with GitHub, I'm taken here to the webhook that I'm adding. And you have to remember that for every single service, uh, this will be a little different. For every application, this will be a little different. And it will require some specific learning when you're trying to apply what we're learning today to that application. But in general, uh, usually what you'll have is the option to provide a payload URL. So this payload URL will be the URL that the, you want the payload, which in this case is the data or the information, to be sent to when this event occurs. So just for example, um, you know, let's say the event that we're triggering this from is a push event. So somebody pushes to my repository, then information about this push will be sent to the URL, and then I can receive that data and do whatever I want with it. Uh, there is some unknown element sometimes with what exactly that data will look like. And that's why usually the first time I'm using this webhook, uh, you know, I'll test it out and see what kind of data is coming. Or possibly uh, if the app has quite good documentation, then you can check it out there as well. And here they give us some extra options so we can see that we can get this back in several formats. I'm going to want to get this content back in JSON format just because it's way easier to use than XML. Uh, and I'm going to send this event whenever anything happens. OK, and here now we need to provide the payload URL. And in order to do that, I'm going to need to create this payload URL in the HTTP functions of my Wix website. So let's head back to the HTTP functions. And here I'm going to be creating a new one. Uh, so I'm going to say const export. And let's just double check the documentation and see the format that we need here. So for the, uh, sorry, introduction up here. So this is the format of the HTTP functions. And I'm going to copy this over and put that right here instead of what I wrote out already. And here we have the prefix. So this is what the kind of request that we're expecting to get from 
the service that we're using the webhook for. And since usually it will be a post, but since there's some level of uncertainty here, we could actually just use the use. And this covers all our bases. So no matter what method they send us, if they send us a get, if they send us a post, a put, whatever, this will work. So this is kind of a generic one that will work here. And the function name, I'm just going to call this GitHub. And this is essentially our webhook at the moment. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say console.log request. And I'm going to say const body is equal to request.body.json. Because remember, we said we want to get this back in JSON format. And I'm going to say console.log body. And I'm going to return OK. And this is important because sometimes some webhooks won't work uh, if they don't get uh, a certain response. And here I'm going to say import OK from Wix HTTP functions. Okay, so this is a very basic webhook. It's not really doing anything with the data. It's just kind of reading the data so that I can see it in our logs and see what kind of format the data is coming back in and then decide what I want to do with it. Uh, and now that I have this set up, I'm just going to go ahead and publish my site. And now I need to figure out what the URL is going to be. So I'm actually going to copy over this URL from my live site. I'm just going to put this right over here, comment it out. And if we take a look at the uh, HTTP functions documentation in Wix, and we scroll down a little bit, we can see that for a free site, which I'm using at the moment, so essentially it'll be the URL of the entire domain plus site name, and then functions and function name. So I'm going to copy over this end, and I'm going to put it right over here. And here, the function name is GitHub. And so this is essentially the URL that I'm going to be passing as the payload URL to my webhook here in GitHub. So I'm going to put that right over here and add this webhook. Excellent. So now that our webhook is set up, theoretically, when I make some kind of event fire off in this repository, I should get a post. So here they specified that it was a post request. So I could have used post instead of use. Uh, I'm going to get, hopefully, this uh, post request to my webhook. So let's go ahead and check it out. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here into the, I'm going to have these logs open here for the uh, GitHub, uh, sorry, for my uh, Wix backend. And you can see already that we already have gotten a request to our webhook. And that's probably just kind of an initial request that the application, in this case, GitHub, sent out to our webhook when we were setting it just to verify that the URL is working and that we got a response OK. Because uh, otherwise, it probably would have told us, oh, there's an error with your, your webhook link, your URL check it out. OK, you have a problem there. So I'm going to go ahead and clear this so we have a clear slate to work with. And I'm going to go to my repository. And I'm just going to make a change to this file that I have over here. So let's go ahead and edit this file. And I'm going to add just another line with another hello world. And I'm going to commit these changes. So I'm going to say uh, webhook test. And I'm going to commit these changes. Great. So I committed these changes to my repository. And I'm going to go here to the logs. And we can see here that we, the webhook did fire. Uh, and here we have our uh, JSON payload and the message, which I can't really see. And we have, uh, so, so essentially, this webhook fired. OK. so. Even though I can't really see the data at the moment, and we have to work out how we're going to view that data, the webhook is working. Uh, and you have to remember that this is just an example with GitHub. 
So this could have been also, you know, a line has been added to your air table and then it, it fires, or this could have been, you know, a Zapier zap went off and this webhook fired. Okay, there are endless implementations and many of the popular services today offer some kind of uh, webhook service like this one. So back here with my webhook function, uh, I'm taking a look at this and trying to figure out why I couldn't see the actual uh, request body. And that is most likely because over here, I do not have the await keyword. Uh, and you might have to add here async as well if you haven't done that already. And now if I go ahead and I publish this, and we go back to our repository, make another change, let's say add another hello world here on the bottom, commit our changes. And now let's take a look at our logs and we can see here that we have our entire object. Okay, so we got this whole entire message back from GitHub and this has lots of different information about the commit that we just uh, made. Uh, and if I just copy this over here, wow, this is a very big message. Lots of information coming around here. Just copy that over and let's paste it over here just so it's a little easier to view. We comment this out. Yeah, so we have here refs before, after, repository. Okay, so ID of my repository. And this is the name of my repository, private, false. So you can see just all this different information about the action that I just took in my repository. Okay, and if you take a look at the documentation itself, so this is the uh, GitHub documentation, they specify, you know, each thing, what comes back, what it means, how to use it, and different webhooks for different apps might be more or less complex than this, but the same principle is true. Uh, so you're going to, just to recap, you're going to go to your HTTP functions in Wix, you're going to create an endpoint, a URL, uh, using either use or in most cases it will be post. And you will receive the data from your app there. And then later on, you can decide what to do with it. So you can either store this in a collection, you can run something on your website, you can do something based on the data that you're getting back here. That's really up to you. Uh, it's important to note that in some cases, there will be a uh, simple uh, UI for submitting this URL to uh, the app that you're using to the service. But in some cases, you might have another step where you actually submit this URL through their API. So you'll have to make a call to an external API and submit your webhook URL. But essentially, the concept is the same. Uh, so that's all on webhooks for today. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, don't forget to give a like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.